Hello everybody, welcome to PromoCell Academy in Heidelberg. My name is Rüdiger Arnold and I'm gonna present some insights on cell growth, cell death and aging of cells. We start off with an introduction to cell growth and then we discuss the importance of cell numbers being relevant for your experimentation. Later on I'm gonna show you examples for cell death and aging of cells. Cell growth can be divided into three phases. First of all, there is a lag phase. This is directly after seeding or thawing. The cells have to attach and to adapt to the new growth conditions. Next, you have a phase where the cells divide in regular time intervals. This is the logarithmic growth phase, so-called log phase. This is ideal for your cell culture. If you do not subcultivate the cells, they run into a plateau where space and nutrition becomes limited. Cells should be not at all too long in a plateau phase. Here are some examples for different cellular densities. Here at the primary human osteoblasts, you see on the left side a nice density for the cells. There is enough space to grow. This is completely different on the right side where the cells have reached confluency. You clearly see that the cell shape is different. It's more outspread on the left while it's more condensed on the right side. Obviously cell morphology is also impinging on cell metabolism and this very much depends on your results being obtained. The second example is of primary human endothelial cells which are on the left side in seeding density. In the middle they had already grown to a certain extent like 70 or 80 percent confluency while on the right they have reached a confluent stage. Here you certainly find cells which since a day or longer did not divide anymore so they differ in their metabolism and it is not a good idea to have these cells directly for an experiment. The growth of cells is linked to cell divisions termed mitosis. This picture shows you a cell in the middle which is in a stage of mitosis. Do you know which stage this is? So let's have a brief review of the four phases of mitosis we can see in cell culture. These are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. During mitosis the chromosomes are condensed and they are in prophase still in the cell's nucleus. In metaphase the cell nuclear membrane disintegrates and the chromosome align in the central plane. In anaphase, the chromatids of the individual chromosomes separate to the opposite sides of the cell. In telophase, the chromosomes have reached their destinations and the nuclear envelope reassembles. So, you did guess right. The cell we did see before was a metaphase cell. Now let's have a look on the microscope how cells divide. The cell being a metaphase cell starts to go into the anaphase so the chromosomes separate to the different poles of the cell. This is anaphase now. Then telophase starts, the chromosomes reach their destination, the nuclear envelope rebuilds and the cells start to separate from each other. They are still tightly linked with a plasma bridge until they completely have completed cell division.
The next slide should show you how important it is to count the cells. This is important because you provide the ideal growth conditions and you standardize your experiment. This avoids lack of nutrition, enough space to grow and is the basis of reproducible experimentation. However, the question remains, are the cells being counted dead or alive? So it's best to combine a cell counting with a cell viability measure. One of the classical methods is uh, counting using a hemocytometer or a cell counting chip. Here single cell suspensions are definitely required, otherwise if you still have aggregates in your cell you would underestimate your cell count. This technique is often combined with a live or dead stain like Tripan Blue. Tripan Blue, as you see from the cartoon, is only entering dead cells while the live cells still stay unstained. Besides the cell counting, there's also an aging phenotype observed in cell culture. So it's important to know how long the cells have been in culture. One of the classical methods is to use a passage number. The passage number refers to the number how often a cell was subcultivated. However, this is a somehow restricted measurement as it does not take into account how many days are between the one and the other subcultivation. So a more accurate number is population doublings. And this exactly refers to the number of mitosis a cell has underwent. This then also reflects how many events there will possibly be where uh, acquiring mutations could be transferred to daughter cells. This example shows you nicely the difference between passage number and population doublings. After the seeding of one cell, it would divide three times, giving rise to eight daughter cells. By that, you have eight times more cells in your dish and you should subcultivate your cells. However, only one passage then means three population doublings. Here we have an example of aging of cells. There are several hallmarks which you can take from the picture comparing top to bottom. The cells flat out, they are more granular, they have increased lysosomes and other organelles and they sometimes have also multinuclear cells inside. So these are hallmarks of aging. Aging in cells is only observed with primary cells explanted from an organism. Cell lines like transformed cells would not age, however they still differ and they drift in culture. So to avoid the risk of a genetic drift, also these cells have to be kept in culture only for a certain length of time. Senescence in cells is associated with shortening of the telomeres. However, this might not be causative for this phenomenon. A late result of aging in cells is programmed cell death, also called apoptosis. Here you see one cell amongst others, which are still live and happy, which had decided to undergo apoptosis. This cell has now produced apoptotic bodies. So these are small organelle type vesicles, which still have a membrane around to keep the intracellular content not to leak out. However, in cell culture, the apoptotic cells will transfer to a late a secondary necrotic phenotype as there is no phagocytotic cell taking them up. A nice example for the induction of a programmed cell death is shown here by starving the cells. These cells lack nutrition and after 48 hours they clearly show a lot of apoptotic cells around which then fall into parts and pieces and generate cell debris, so secondary necrosis. 
We're now at the end of our session on cell growth, cell death and aging. I hope I could convince you that determining the cell number is very important to standardize your work. For further information, please visit the scientific resources under promocell.com. Thank you very much for joining us and all the best for your work.